Welcome to the College of Health Sciences here at Sanford University. My name is Jill Pence, Associate Professor and Executive Director of our Experiential Learning and Simulation Center. Here in the college, we host four schools with over 30 programs and just over 1,200 students. Our foundation is built on interprofessional education where our students can learn about, with, and from each other to better prepare them as they go out into practice. A lot of our activities that support interprofessional education happen upstairs in the simulation center on the third floor. I'll meet you there. Welcome to our experiential learning and simulation center. This floor houses clinical labs that serve the entire College of Health Sciences. We opened in 2017 following a full renovation of the 22,000 square feet that you will see today. This building was originally a, an office building with cubicles, offices, and computer stations. We took this floor down to the studs and made it a clinical setting that's realistic for our students and our faculty to practice and learn in. We are so excited you're here and I can't wait to show you all of the spaces that we've created for our students. We will begin today's tour in our pharmacy area with the non-sterile compounding lab. Student pharmacists practice and simulate making medications that require compounding. They are able to utilize this in simulations with our standardized patients and in the exam rooms that you will soon see. In our sterile compounding lab, which we are entering now, they are able to practice scrubbing in as they would in practice, gowning up, and coming into the 10 bay room that allows them to practice intravenous medication preparation. They are able to practice and then review their own own performance and see how, how they are doing prior to having to pass off their competency simulations. Next we'll move to our exam room suite. This is a 10 room area that typically is used for our standardized patient simulations. It is laid out like an outpatient setting or a doctor's office with each room looking exactly the same with the same equipment. All of the rooms have recording ability and a charting area for students to chart in the electronic health record. It has a center hallway area for our standardized patients to enter from their lounge area so that they do not have any cross mixing of the students before the simulation events. This area allows our students to be prepared as they move into the outpatient setting. Next, we have our Flex Lab. This space is used for small group simulation, individual student remediation, and interprofessional teams to work in a clinical setting. Today, I have one of our faculty from our speech pathology department, Kelly Jackson, that's here working with one of our mannequins. Kelly, I was wondering if you could tell me how your students use interprofessional education to better prepare them. In the ever-changing landscape of healthcare, we're being asked more often to work on interprofessional teams. As speech pathologists, our students will work with nurses, PTs, OTs, social workers, and many other disciplines in their clinical practice. Through our simulation center and our opportunities here, we're able to guide them in that education on working on an interprofessional team before they get out to their clinical placement. For example, in our home lab that is created and designed very similarly to what you would see out in the community, you will find several students from different dis disciplines working together. They are working in interprofessional teams to better prepare each other to take care of our patients out in the community setting. Welcome to our bed labs. We have two rooms with 20 beds each that serve all of our students in the college. Students will typically come here to practice different types of skills, both with mannequins and task trainers, as well as work with each other in trying to learn how to do body mechanics, patient transfers, and different skills related to hospital-based care. With the ability to tie these three rooms together, our faculty can have up to 72 students here at a time in a clinical setting. Throughout the center, we have a recording system that records simulations, debriefings and various activities. One of those is here at this demonstration bed. This bed allows faculty to show small skills such as a systems assessment or an IV start and it's projected to the large screens in all three rooms. This allows students to stay at their stations and practice while the faculty is demonstrating. 
Next, we'll move into our assessment lab. This room is a 12-bed lab that allows any type of activity that doesn't require a hospital setting to occur. Things such as CPR, ACLS, and various different activities that students may learn, such as assessments and practicing with each other. Next, we move to our high fidelity suite. We have five rooms housing high fidelity mannequins. This is our first, which is the OR, and is typically used by our nurse anesthesia students. The HPS mannequin that is housed here simulates human physiology and gas exchange. Next, we'll move to our four medical rooms. The first area is our adult med surge area. Patients that are in the medical surgical area or an ICU setting are typically done in these rooms. Each room has its own private control room and students from disciplines across the college practice together as well as within their own programs. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. I want to just come in and see how y'all are doing and see if you could tell me a little bit about how you feel simulation better prepares you as a nursing student. Well, simulation really prepares us because it gives us the opportunity to work in a safe environment um, before we actually go out to the hospitals and practice with real patients. Absolutely. How do you feel like working in teams such as this benefits you and will benefit you when you go into practice? Well, in the hospital you work with several different teams. So here I'm working with a PA student and a pharmacy student. So we could kind of learn how to efficiently like work together as a team. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Jacob, and y'all can pick up where you left off. Next, we'll move to our debriefing rooms. Each of our simulation rooms has its own private debriefing room with a screen for playback on our reporting system. This is where students and faculty can work together to make sure they achieve the outcomes of the simulation. We also have a medication room and medication dispensing room. This is where our students come and receive their medications and they work in our electronic health charting record and chart the medications there. Next, we'll move to our OB room. This is where we have our maternity simulations, our neonatal simulations, and we can also double this mannequin as an adult medical patient uh, that is not pregnant. So it allows us to utilize the room in various ways. And then the last room we have is our pediatric room, which is typically used for pediatric simulations. It can also double as a standardized patient room if we're wanting to use a live person in the bed. Well, that concludes the tour of the Experiential Learning and Simulation Center. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the resources that we have for our students to better prepare them as they go out into the clinical setting. Thank you for joining us at the College of Health Sciences at Sanford University. Thank you.